are you new to the spray tan industry and really looking for a reference for some of the most common spray tan application mistakes and how to fix them? Uh, stay tuned. I am going to give you some tips and tricks of some of the most common things I see happen for beginning spray tan artists. Hello, welcome to Impressive Glow. My name is Gina. I am the owner and educator of Impressive Glow Spray Tan and Teeth Whitening Training, where my ultimate mission is to help women, moms, single moms, learn how to start a side hustle as either a spray tan or teeth whitening technician and to build some financial independence in that process. All right, so a common mistake or issue that I see with new spray tan technicians is how to make sure that they're not getting um, overspray or stained palms for their client. And I think one of the biggest mistakes is really just not applying enough barrier cream to the palm of the hand. So I kind of want to show you my application of barrier cream. So I'm always putting barrier cream in my hand because if I go to put that in her palm, a lot of clients want to instinctively just kind of rub this all together and apply it in places where maybe I don't necessarily want it. So by putting it in my palm, I have a lot more control as to where this is going. So with her palms out, I'm taking my barrier cream and I want to show you how thick this application really needs to be to guarantee you're not going to get any of those stained palm funky hand kind of issues after your client processes. And you got to make sure you let your client know also that you don't want them to rub this in. We want it to be nice and thick in that palm. So very apparent, nice and thick in the palm so we don't get any stained um, palms the next day after processing. All right, another common issue that I see happen with new spray tan artists, but even some veteran spray tan artists, is I'm seeing a lot of solution on the hands, the feet, the neck, the face. And, I, and especially with the seasons changing and the different weather, you really have to be really di diligent as to how much pH balance you're applying, making sure you're pulling your gun away. So to make sure that we're getting nice, beautiful hands and feet and neck and face, we wanna make sure we're applying enough pH balance spray. If you're not using pH balance spray, um, Please take my new course that I offer, Spray Tan Solution 101, because I need you to, to understand why pH balance spray is so important, especially to those areas of the body. So when we're applying pH balance spray to the hands, we're gonna be nice and loose claws, and I want a good saturation right on those hands. I wanna give it a minute to dry. You can even blend it a little bit with a blending brush, but we wanna make sure that those hands are super hydrated when we're going to apply this solution because we don't want the solution to get soaked up, get super, super dark. You've seen the spray tan hands. It's a mess. So make sure you're applying enough pH balance spray to those hands. All right, so another common mistake that I see new spray tan artists making is we get a lot of saturation right where you're first applying your solution. So you get like a buildup of solution right on the shoulder, um, outside of the hip or above the leg. The reason for that is because you're starting directly on your spray tan client's body. Where you should be initially putting those that spray right when you first initially spray it should be off the body. So that way you can kind of drag the solution along the rest of your body. You're not getting a, any oversaturation at those beginning lines. So let's look and see what that looks like. Another issue that I see sometimes happen with uh, newer spray tan artists is oversaturation or when you start getting that beading on your client's skin. And that can be a scary thing because a lot of times people think that, oh my gosh, it's going to process horrible on the skin. It's actually not as big of an issue as I think a lot of spray tan artists make it out to be. A couple key things to fix that situation though is your gun setting. It's super important to make sure that your gun is set to where if you do have a mistake or if you do mess something up at the application, it's so much easier to fix it if your gun setting is low enough. If your gun setting is too high, it's harder for you to go back in there and kind of correct anything. Also, what we wanna make sure we're doing is we're keeping our gun completely level the entire time. We don't have any tilting. When you have tilting, you're gonna get an oversaturation of solution coming out of your gun which will make sure that the solution doesn't apply evenly so we got to keep our gun completely level the entire time that you're spray tanning and the, throughout the entire application 
Also, distance and speed has to be consistent the entire way. If you are going one speed here and then you slow down at the lower part of her back, you're going to have oversaturation in this area. So the way that you can fix any type of oversaturation or any type of beading, let it dry, give it a second, come in with your gun, do not go in with your blending brush too fast. You do not want to blend wet solution all over the place. Let it dry for a second, complete the spray tan, and then if you need to come in and blend anything out, you can use your brush and just kind of come in and stipple solution away and kind of pick up any excess. All right, I hope you guys are loving these tips and tricks so far. If you're looking for more uh, tips for technicians just starting their spray tan business, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Also, I'm gonna link a video, one of my newest videos about how to make sure you can get the longest wear out of a spray tan so that you are known as the technician in your area to not only give the most beautiful application, most beautiful color, but also making sure that your girls get the longest wear out of that tan. All right, another issue that I see sometimes happen in terms of skin on skin friction when you're applying solutions sometimes your client may you know it gets tiring being in those positions after a while um, but what happens sometimes is you'll get skin to skin like friction and you'll get some smudging in this area a lot of times it happens up in the arm area so what you can do once you're done with the application do not do this when you're applying the solution on wet solution let it dry for a second you can take your dense side of your finishing powder brush and you can kind of come in and just manipulate the solution and kind of rub out that excess bronzer that caused the smudge. Because it's really not an excess of DHA, it's just that bronzer that has smudged in that area where she had that skin on skin friction. So here now you can see how even this is gonna process once you kind of come in here and buff it out. But the idea and most important thing is to make sure that you're doing this on tacky solution not wet solution it has to be a little tacky and you can kind of go a little dense with this brush here and so now you can't even tell that there would have been a line there All right, I hope this video has helped you in your beginning uh, stages of your spray tan business. Maybe this has even helped some veteran spray tan artists. I hope that helps you guys as well. Don't forget, subscribe to my channel so you can get all the tips and tricks. Don't forget, I also offer uh, beauty business coaching. I offer coaching calls, which is one hour uh, Zoom calls that you get with me to go over anything you have in your beauty business, how to get more clients, how to use Instagram to benefit your business. I'll link all my coaching programs and all my coaching links in the description so you can see that. Don't also forget that I offer online, live, virtual, and in-person spray tan and teeth whitening training. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you in the next one.